Sure, I've been in danger many times, I mean, I've been shot before, like, sure, sure. He, he had a knife on him, uh, you know what I mean, it's wow. a that's just from the, the horse's mouth. On him, like, he was in danger, let alone, like, do you know what I mean? But no one's saying nothing about that, but... Hello there, this is becoming a bit of a habit, but I just had some pressing questions about the Jay Slater case. Welcome to Aldon's Reviews and True Crime. They have reported that the investigator, was that Mark Thomas or was that one of the Spanish investigators? Because he did speak to the Guardia, we believe. Or he believes. Who do we believe? So he said that Jay Slater was said to have a knife, or two knives, when he walked away. He must have been scared. Um, detective guy said, oh, he had two knives on him, and he and he left scared. That's even more mental, like, the guy had two knives on him, like, he was in danger, let alone, like, do you know what I mean? But no one's saying nothing about that, but, also, like I said, we're not even, I'm not even going to complain about that. I want to pick up on a point of this business where they're taking the mickey out of internet detectives, or are they calling them armchair detectives? Now, it was an armchair detective that solved a crime once. I can't remember, I can't recall which What Was it Nicola Bully, or was it a smaller case than that? But they actually delved in, and the police looked into it, because the armchair detective had so much information and so many discrepancies within the investigation that was closed, it was reopened and looked at, and it was found that this armchair detective actually solved it because they've got a lot of time and they can look into things more so that um, some of these uh, YouTubers, uh, TikTokers, social media people do it for a living. Uh, they've got 100 plus thousand subscribers and they're, um, they're enjoying what they're doing and they're, you know, they're, they're, they're savvy. So I wouldn't put a diss on all these so-called internet sleuths and whatever, because people, it just opens things up and it uh, it spreads um, a net over all the possibles. And this case has a lot of possibles. Another little slip-up, small slip-up, was when Ahab said his mate, meaning Jay's mate, was sleeping. He slipped up and he said, oh, his mate was sleeping. Oh, no, I mean, my mate was sleeping, Rocky. He was sleeping. How was someone already asleep? But no, you asked me for the charge of but his mate. But his mate, well, my mate was sleeping, Rocky. Um, how was someone already asleep? But no, you asked me for the charge of but his mate. But his mate, well, my mate was sleeping, Rocky. Um, I gave him the charger because Rocky gave me that beforehand and I uh, gave him the charger uh, that he didn't charge his phone with because there was 1% on the phone reported. The other point that I picked up on in the wording of the exchange between Ayab and Rocky was that he went out the night before and there were fireworks no rockets there were real rockets the night before is it significant in this case it is significant because of all the people that are surrounding this strange missing person the knives are a big one but what went on the night before you know what happened the night before do you know what I'm saying these don't even know like rockets bro well, I don't have to explain it to them bro, you know I mean? but the mad thing is you know what happened the night before, do you know what I'm saying? These don't even know, like, rockets, bro. Oh. Was that when the photograph was said to be taken of the three stood beside the road on the little concrete uh, bollards? Another point that I've picked up on as well, and this was reported in the national news, and I gather that the family were 
quite upset. They couldn't see the body that was found. Now that's strange. In real terms, if you have to, to go and see, if you want to go and see, or you have to formally identify a body, it's normally up to you because it's quite harrowing. The Guardia refused the family and Debbie, the mum, to see the body. I don't think they can do that. They decided, the Guardia, if the family said, no, I'm not going to see the body because it's their property because you don't want to see all that. But the Guardia has said the body was in such a state, which it would be after a month, that we don't want you to see the body. That is suspicious because if the family want to see something and it's horrific, they can go and, you know, go and see the body or the remains or whatever it was. So I've got a, a problem with the very short autopsy or post-mortem that was carried out and the wording, it was about a paragraph, died. It said that Jay Slater had numerous broken bones. Numerous? It just must have been a real jaggedy cliff when you fall down. Sorry about it. It's morbid, but you fall down, you break a load of bones. I believe, did they say a head injury? I don't think they did. They just said it was uh, from traumas to the body, reflected by a fall. There's going to be a lot of red tape anyway, getting a second autopsy over here in the UK. But I just wonder... If somebody forceful would have stepped in and said, right, you found the body, which was reported, the Guardian reported it to be found Monday around about 10, 11 o'clock a.m. But it wasn't. It was found in the dark. That's what I've got a problem with. It was in the dark. Authorities wouldn't hastily operate at 2 a.m., in the pitch black, you'd wait for it to be light. The body's still going to be there the next day when it's light. So why was it searched for in the dark? They must have had loads and loads of floodlights. You can just take away all the floodlights if it's light. First light, that's the best time, first light. just don't understand. I do not understand. The dogs over there were said to be search dogs. Now, I know that the Holland team had two people and a dog, and this dog was very special, but weren't the other dogs special? The other dogs couldn't pick up the scent. But this dog that came from the Holland team that work off sponsors and charities, they don't ask for any money. I gather they may have asked for expenses, but then again, they get, they've got so many sponsors sponsoring them, and they're happy because... They're using the equipment of the sponsors, etc., and they're raising awareness and they're gaining their money that way. But that dog came over and it had nothing to do because the body had already been found by the Guardia because a bit of a panic. We better find it or plant it, I have to say. Well, the Guardia said it's still found, no, no searching. To be, and I think that the Holland team said to the family, well, well as a bit of comfort, we can... We can let the dog to see if it's got a scent, see if it can find where the, the, the body went off the ravine. And lo and behold, the dog latched onto the scent right away from the Airbnb or wherever it was from the side of the road or wherever the police closed everything down. It was the Euro uh, final in Spain v England. So less people, less possibility of people around pitch black and they took the body out from wherever the roadside, trundled it along, planted it, dropped off the cliff or whatever. The dog picked up on that scent straight away. Or are we saying that he did spend a month there in the ravine, fed off, 
had a fall, broke all those bones, and there wasn't a dog that could pick up that scent. Of all the dogs, all the search dogs that the Guardia have at there, it, um, and it, and it's nothing new in the mountains. They have dogs that search for people because people do go missing quite a bit in Tenerife, and they have these dogs. Those dogs couldn't sniff out that trail, but this dog sniffed it out straight away. I believe it was less than an hour and a half, two hours to find where the body was because the police, the Guardia, wouldn't tell the family where the body exactly was. So they found out from the Holland team and that's when they put um, some memorial things and whatever you put there. There was a, a minor point as well um, of Rocky. He looked nervous, didn't he? But might be just his way about him. He had some glasses on, but I don't think there is anything in this. Jose to have glasses on, he had glasses on. Put two and two together. But we, you know, I really want to end on this case. There are lots of other cases to discuss, lots of missing people, lots of crime to talk about, all sorts. So just put in the comments what you think and don't know where it's going really but it just gets crazier by the day this case it really does thank you for listening bye for now <laughs>